No. Let anything. everyone know you're being recorded. All right. Well, oh, yeah, let's, here we let's, go. What are you started? All right. Now, there you go. Keep looking at the camera. That way we get a person. So uh, before we begin, I, you know, I, what I did the last hour is that while I was eating dinners, I watched our video from three years ago. And I agree with you. There was still a lot of stuff that's very relative. Did you um, change the title? I did change the title. Thank you. Uh, but I wanted to share with you in case you didn't see it today. And I, I know I didn't mention it to you. I was going to save it for tonight. Tonight is the 11th, actual 11th anniversary of when we filed the Articles of Incorporation for the company. Uh, my mom my mom uh, paid for it. It was like about $400 for the Florida fee for incorporation uh, as a graduation present from the masters from Nova Southeastern University. And then, of course, unfortunately, she died uh, that December of 13. Uh, so uh, today is the 11th uh, anniversary, and today is Amanda Puckett's 30th birthday. Oh, big congratulations. Yeah, she's, she's in Jacksonville. Uh, no, she's in uh, Maryland, but it looks like she might have been uh, in Europe or, or somewhere for her birthday because she posted some pictures. Uh, uh, and it looks like I said where she was. So anyway, so to keep track or time, because we're going to try to do it about 30 minutes today. What you know, when I watched the video uh, earlier, you know, we spent a lot of time in the previous video talking about the history, your history, how you got in. Uh, we talked about, you know, what you were doing in the early days of ADR, really all the way up until 2021. OK, um, today, what I'd like to do in this interview is is have you reflect. And and think 11 years later. Do you, th you know, and, 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 and I'm not in any way making excuses for myself in the sense that I know I've made some mistakes. We tried to build it. They will come for the legal industry mm -hmm. that didn't work. <laughs> Uh, we tried to stay somewhat affiliated, at least loosely, with the, quote, mediation industry. That didn't work. Uh, we became friends and, 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 and started to respect Dr. Ernest Thiessen and the folks up in Canada at Smart Saddle. Uh, and, you know, we started to incorporate the e-negotiation facilitated e-negotiation in the true neutral and let you me, talked a lot you, about let me ask you a question why why is this smart settle not more successful well i don't know that they're not uh meaning there's not anybody been commercially successful now you could say possibly cyber settle was in one little niche because they had self-insured cities you could even right. say Modria was because they did get the property tax appraisal business looking at at that capability. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that, you know, I, to answer your question, I think that Dr. Thiessen and those guys have. Like we did, we think we can do everything and we can. I mean, meaning the technology could be used for just about any tech, uh, any type of dispute. But you've got to get started and you've got to get consumers to use it. Right. And I guess, and again, this is an interview of myself is, as much as is wanting to get your thoughts. But to your question, uh, how do we get people to use it? And you mentioned in the previous video, and I, I didn't even remember it till I listened to it tonight, talking about, um, you know, these uh, other countries, you, you named China. Uh, parts of Europe, uh, we know Australia and New Zealand, they're doing this stuff for free. You know, it's part of a community service. I mean, in, in, in a roundabout way, the courts are an infrastructure paid for by the taxpayers, funded partially by lawsuit fees. And, and then, of course, the private industry of attorneys making their money on it. But it, 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 mediation should be low cost no cost right and that's one of the things i want to go to tonight because you and i have been talking 
outside this video stream about advertising supported capability. You know, I hear people complain all day long. Facebook's got too many ads. Facebook's got too many ads. Well, it's free. It's a very powerful social media mechanism that costs us nothing. It's become part of a fabric of our society, and it's cost us nothing because it's ad supported. Everything well, Google does is well, ad supported. Amazon Prime you, has the options. You can have the free, or you can pay uh, for uh, you can pay for it and have no ads, uh, or you have ads. I, I think they we're on some, something. Some things are way free. Some of the things you can just get free. Some are ad free, but you have to pay for that. And then others you get and you see ads. So they have three options. So, you know, right. that's that, that may be a model. We got to well, give something. I think it is. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to just throw you softballs because we've had this conversation. It is part of our business model that revenue will come from advertising. But we're back to your question to me about Dr. Thiessen. Uh, it's not the technology superior. Our technology was great technology, but we couldn't get it accepted because we were counting on the legal industry to take us there to their clients. And they were never going to do that. OK, so mm -hmm. now we have never. this URL. So one of my questions that I wrote the other night in advance of this interview uh, do you like the name avoidcore.com? I love and do it. Do you think, do you think, you know, it's almost my name, of course, is David and Dave, the, the parable of David and Goliath. Uh, are we going to have to take on a legal industry um, or can we just? No, we have to avoid them. That's why it's called avoid courts. Right. I, I, I've found it in my life, in all the various projects that I've done. I've run across obstacles that stopped me in my tracks. And I've run across obstacles that have veered me away and found a way around them. I think that that's what we're doing. Because um, if we basically uh, use voidcourts.com and bill it and give away free negotiation tool so they can learn and maybe have a little, um, uh, Dan French could do a little, one of those, you know, airbrush things to show people how they, they can negotiate on our tool by themselves and give them the orange uh, thing to do. And um, let, you know, just and have people, you know, an animation of them solving it in two, two minutes by using the negotiation tool. Then we give them the negotiation tool for 15 minutes free. That gets them in, in, involved in, quote, the game of the negotiation. And uh, that's a, a value to them beyond this dispute. It's a teaching tool. It's public education. And, and they're getting it free. So I see that as what our hook is in terms of the fact is They'll never get a negotiation in 15 minutes, a negotiated settlement in 15 minutes. And then you come to the second part of what we do is to provide a facilitator. And the facilitator may spend five minutes trying to help them. And they still probably won't have a, you know, a uh, negotiated settlement. And then you, can, then you can say, well, you've got five, three minutes of facilitation. Uh, from here on in, the clock will run. It's very cheap. Would you want me to continue helping you? And then they, you know, say yes. And, you know, whatever you would charge, you know, $5 an hour, $10 an hour, just a set fee, $25 a piece. And he'll help you come to negotiate a settlement. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of people who can do this kind of thing. There are probably 100,000 trained mediators already in this country. Easy. From all the various uh, centers. Well, yeah, you, know, you you know we've had so many talks over the last twelve years. Uh, I, I like it that we've agreed to use the word facilitator, 
instead of mediator negotiator. Me too. Uh, uh, you know, the legal industry has, has tried to. Well, the legal industry has tried to create fear with UPL, unauthorized practice of law. The the analogy I always give in humor is, you know, growing up watching Charlie Brown uh, uh, cartoons seasonally. And I remember the one where Lucy had her booth for five cents for psychiatric advice. And, and of course, we know Lucy wasn't uh, a degreed or licensed uh, psychologist or psychiatrist. And so she couldn't really charge. Right. But we often need psychologists and, and, and we often don't know where or how to afford them. And then we we've got to get this mindset that if we have a conflict, what's the law say? Because in the previous video, you spent quite a bit of time talking about mediation is not a legal process. You don't bring up the it's, law at all. Right. And in so our, in our systems that we had in Hawaii, lawyers were not allowed in the mediation room. Right. But the, I, I had three successful mediations at Auburn University between the Black Student Union and, and um, student organizations like fraternities and things like that, the student newspaper. And I got agreements all three times, much to my surprise, except for the third one, because it was between the fraternity and the Black Student Union. And this fraternity had an Old South Parade. And um, it almost caused a riot because the black football players almost stormed the uh, cars and trucks that had these fraternity boys in Confederate uniforms and the girls in their um, you know hoop skirts and black players who were they the, the police had to restrain them it almost went into a riot. So I mediated the case and the fraternity, which was Kappa Alpha. Um, one of the first Southern fraternities at Washington Lee University. Um, they had a very big house on the main drag, and um, they came to the mediation. And there's a lawyer from national headquarters with them. And I was surprised at how polite they were with the guys from the Black Student Union. And the Black Student Union was very polite with them. And they worked on an agreement. And then all of a sudden, the lawyer said, I can't, uh, National can't accept that agreement. And I said, they, they, they've made an agreement. Uh, what's wrong with it? He says, it's in violation of the First Amendment freedom of speech. And, um, you know, the fraternity guys said, well, if our National will accept it, we can't, we can't agree. So there you go. You get a perfectly good agreement between people who want to end this thing peacefully and as rapidly as possible, and they do it. Blacks and whites in the South, the deepest part of the South, Alabama, and you got a lawyer in the room, and he squelches it. Well, actually, he did squelch it, but it got settled exactly the same way within a couple of months afterwards between them. So I, I I helped facilitate that agreement, but we didn't get the actual agreement that night. But once you bring in the law, it's a whole different ballgame. And lawyers are, well, you know, this guy, you're getting paid to do that. They <laughs> screw up, you know, a, a good uh, resolution. That's this, what they this do. Converse, this interview's intended to be a little shorter so that maybe we get more views. And, you know, when, we, when you and I get going, we can we can go from go 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 but uh in the spirit of what you just said i guess i'm trying to create this layer you know this term odr we never we never really associated with that term closely online dispute resolution okay we came up with this methodology tdr uh, technology enhanced dispute resolution never once because of you did we think we're going to do this without human involvement. We just never clearly define what type of human could be involved. A few minutes ago, you said there's th hundreds of thousands of trained mediators. Sure. 
uh, Stanley, Community, Stanley. Community boards alone has trained 40,000 in San Francisco. Right. Well, we know Stanley on our team is is an accredited trainer of mediators here in Florida from, you know, sanctioned by the Supreme Court. Yeah, mostly but, lawyers, though. Am, am I wrong that we could take an average person with some you know, worldly experience, business experience, uh, you know, good communication skills and and use like your mediation training manual that we were using back in Hawaii, maybe yeah. blended a little bit with Stanley, uh, you know, and then with Chris Voss, because what we're doing is facilitated electronic negotiation. We're not doing mediation. No, because right. the lawyers have have kind of uh, encapsulated it within the legal system and corrupted the process. And right, they right. will say, if you use the word mediation, they'll say that's the practice of law. Right. right. And, right. and as you said in the previous video, you 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 don't you don't come in and say, what does the law say? You come in to a true neutral, and that neutral builds that trust, you know, asserting him or herself yes. as a, in this case, we're using a computer and this AI, right? You know, the lawyers now are trying to go, oh, AI is bad. No, the AI is able to help um, diagram the dispute. It's able to have the parties describe what they would like to, to see as, as a range of the settlement and look for deltas. But it's a facilitated process that the human still manages. So it's not AI doing it all for you. It's, 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 it's the blend of Ted Tedder, technology enhanced dispute resolution. Let, let, let me, We're let using me, the AI. Let, let me answer a question that you kind of asked me. Okay. Anybody can be trained to be a good facilitator. In our community mediation service in Hawaii, our mediators were college students. Some of them, my best mediators were college students. A nurse, a policeman, retired people. People like that, teachers. They make great facilitators. I mean, you don't have to be, all you have to be is empathetic. You don't need any particular skills or knowledge base to help someone be uh, a good facilitator. Here are a few tips and, and things that, that has to have a help. You know, learning how to do reality testing with parties. You take one aside and you ask them certain questions to make them realize that, well, you can continue to fight and be miserable. And you can you can go to get a lawyer and pay a lot of money, and there's no guarantee you're going to win anything. They, you know, what do you really want out of this? By asking simply by asking questions, in terms of what their needs are, and uh, what their deepest interest is in resolving this particular dispute or series of disputes between uh, two people or three or more. What you really need is a person who listens well, uh, doesn't have an opinion, um, shows empathy towards both sides, because I always found when I did mediation that when the first person talked and told their side of the story, um, oh boy, I, that other person is horrible, the person is definitely right. And then I hear the other story and I think, oh my gosh, this person's right. You know, it really, you know, so you get two entirely different views. Frequently, there's miscommunication, which is the, what you really want to get ironed out when you have the, the individual caucuses with each in the mediation process. And that's can't be done. People just negotiating. They, they're never going to get to their interests. Only in the private meeting part can the facilitator Yes. What do you really want to get? What is the most important thing you want to get out of this? And, they, and they'll usually tell you. And then you go to the other person. And says, what do you think uh, your, your, your adversary wants most? 
and they'll say something. Say, no, that's not it. Try again. They'll try something else. Nope, that's not it. You want me to tell you? And then you say, is that what he really wants? Yes. Well, okay, well, I'll give him that if. Here's what I want. What I really need. And they'll say what they really need. Do you mind if I share that with him? No, by all means, do. I did this on the, I did this on the telephone uh, over 50 times in one year when we had the uh, center at the University of Hawaii. And it was amazing how quickly we got, uh, within a half hour, we have the thing uh, settled. And usually it was because of a miscommunication or misunderstanding of what the person really was after. Well, you, so you don't, have to, you don't have to be any great mind or have any great education in order to do that. What you need to do is understand the nature of disputes and miscommunication and how very gently a facilitator can talk to each individually, which is hard, you, that can't happen in a negotiation. You need a third party intervener who's empathetic to both sides and just wants to get them to resolve the dispute, which is why they're there. So if you get them to play that little game, see uh, Dan French do two or three minutes of them solving the uh, orange thing, for example. You know, there's ways of, you don't have to compromise. You can make the pie bigger. And um, well, you, you know, that you're, you, it's a good, this is a good transition to kind of the final question. We're right at about 40 minutes already. It's hard to believe. Um, you mentioned now twice orange story, just for our viewers who may not be familiar, you know, that comes from the Yuri Fisher book, Getting the Yes. I love that book. The back channel story is that the boy wants the fruit of the orange, the meat of the orange, right. and the girl wants the peel, but there she needs it for the zest for a cake. Or, or marmalade. It, huh? Or marmalade. Right. Well, whatever. Uh and and so in a traditional dispute where your emotions come on in the other video you talk about truth okay well your version of the truth and my version of the truth we're, we're political you know we actually agree more than we don't but yet when we disagree we usually strongly agree what's your version of truth and you sometimes you tell me you're just wrong and i go well no I no you're wrong no, no, no. mediator and facilitators are not interested in truth at all right that's my point or the right. law or the, right. neither truth nor the law. What they're interested in is what do you really need? Right. And 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 so we're back to on this call, you've said uh you've said uh private caucuses. In the orange story, and I've said this to Stanley a million times, that if the, the two teenagers went straight to mediation and and they made their opening statements i want the orange and she wants the orange and i don't want to share the orange or whatever and literally if a really good neutral gets into a private caucus and says to a young lady what do you want she goes i want the peel gets in with a young man i want the fruit 100 percent of people can get what they want instead of settling for half right hey, and so hey. That's that's the the the, the taking the emotional. We're not we, we don't have time on this call to really start to go into that aspect of where my area of expertise and applicability towards this process is emotional intelligence. Ninety to ninety five percent of conflict are emotions, mm -hmm. and we've got to remove the truth, so to speak, because we're not judging the truth. Each person has their version of the truth. We're not judging the law. We're not going to say, "Is it what do you want to settle this?" And if, right. if we can, what, if what, are your needs, what are your needs? Not what you want. What right. are your needs? That's that's right. the difference. And now lawyers don't give a crap about that. They care about what the law says and what the law gives and what the law says is fair and all the rest of that kind of stuff. Right. It isn't a question of what's fair to the lawyer or to the courts. It's what the person needs, their basic interests and its safety. It's health. It's their kids' safety and health. Uh, various things like that. These are deep human needs that every human being has. And that's what like, lawyers don't care about that. They care about the positions and, and how it fits into the law. 
the positions or the facts. And that's why they say you get at the truth so that we can solve this problem because it applies to the law. And once you do that, that equals justice. The real justice is a satisfaction of each person's basic needs and interests. That's justice. And only they can determine that. Well, my final, my final question tonight is, and I kind of gave you a a little bit of background on a discussion the other uh, other night, and so this is not entirely from left field, but you use the term uh, traditional mediation, right? Okay, Mm -hmm. I use the term old school mediation. Now we're trying to we're trying to build a business, and you know, and a, a business comes, it, it, business shouldn't be based on profitability. It should be based on customer satisfaction leading to a decent amount of, of profitability, a reasonable mm-hmm. amount. All right. Now that said, the term impasse, right? Often in these mediations. So, since we talked the other night, I started thinking we talk about options, 15 minutes for free. Not likely they're going to to uh, to uh, settle it in 15 minutes. We talk about ad supported or no ads. You make the choice. You just got to pay. Okay. But if you hit an impasse, do you think it's – why wouldn't it be natural? You know Stanley uh, real well. Why wouldn't it be natural to go, okay, when you're an impasse, click here to go to traditional mediation? Right? Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? That if the technology, the TED, the TED, the technology enhanced dispute resolution doesn't result in and that, and and the facilitator says, okay, this is more difficult. You might add, you might say traditional old school. Non-legal mediation. Therefore, well, no, right. you no, leave, your, no, leave your lawyers yeah. outside the room because your lawyers are not coming in to our mediation. Say, say non-legal. Put that in the title. Right. Therefore, like it can't be an unauthorized practice of law because there's nothing legal in it. When when you, you, what was the, one, what one, was the, the best, dur- one of the best agreements I ever got was between a couple with a kid who weren't married and he was from the mainland. He was Howley, white white guy, and he was Chinese American. He was a Jewish guy from New York City. He got accepted to Cornell Medical School, and they had been living together for a long time. He had a kid, and she did not want to move to New York. And he was accepted to Cornell Med in New York City, and his mother was dying for him to be a doctor. And I got an agreement between them, where he gave up all. Um, uh, anything to do with the kid's education, anything to do with the kid at all, he would be out of the picture entirely. And she agreed with that. And that's the way they had the agreement. And um, uh, it, it got settled because uh, it took two sessions because I said, why don't you go call your mother and talk to her? And then we'll come back next week and, and, and decide. So we did, and the mother agreed. She loved that, that little girl. But she agreed to give up everything so that her, her son could go to Cornell Med. So I was very happy with that. I thought it was a great agreement. And uh, a couple of months later, I was in a supermarket pushing around a cart. And I ran across one of my law students, who is now an attorney. And um, um, her name is Barbara. I said, how are you doing, Barbara? Blah, blah. And she says, oh, you know that case that you uh, mediated between so-and-so and so-and-so? I said, yeah. Well, I represented um, the the guy, and I told him he couldn't do it because that's against the law in Hawaii. So that's the way it goes. If people want, people want to give up the kid, they can't. To do something else they want to do in life. Why? You know, it's like the abortion issue. People don't want to have a kid because it's going to screw up their life. Why can't the woman make that choice? And in this particular case, 
two people made a choice, the woman and the husband, and the two lovers made that choice. They, they, what was best for them? What did they need the most? She needed to stay in Hawaii with her family, with her girl. He needed to satisfy his mother in New York and become a doctor. Agreement against the law. So it ended up in court. And so that's the kind of stuff that drives me nuts about the legal right. system. Did they really settle the conflict? No. They made it worse for everybody. That little girl was half Chinese and half Jewish. And she grew up as Chinese in Hawaii. Hey, she was a Hapa Hawley with a good Chinese family. She had a good life. But going back and forth between New York City and Honolulu and the Jewish community in New York and, and, and the, the mother and the father fighting with each other all the time, that's what the law wanted them to do. I understand. Well, all right. So, Tom, I, I think you mentioned that you still have your mediation training manual. Yeah, from, I think I do. I'm you know, back sure in I the do. 80s. Mm -hmm. Ted, I mean, uh, Stanley has a mediation training manual. Uh, we uh, we can surely get a negotiation training manual from our partners in the negotiation side. Uh, and then when I was in graduate school taking facilitation, I had to one of the projects for the class was to to design and write a, a facilitation training manual. So I think combining what you've had, what a little bit of what uh, Stanley has facilitation negotiation final component is a little bit of training about emotional intelligence where our software has that built into it and it's trying to understand the emotional makeup of the two parties i think we've got i think we've got something that no one has ever done before it's just back to your question about dr Thiessen. we've got to get the consumers to try it and it's just like the way Uber blew up transportation and Airbnb blew up uh, uh, lodging. Airbnb well, didn't call Hilton it, Hyatt and Marriott and say. It would be possible to get some sort of a large organization uh, with has many, many customers uh, to uh, sponsor it. And it, it, they would then give it away free to their their customer base oh, or I, membership I think, base. I think that's I think that's where we're going with it. So, okay, well, listen, well, thank you for your time tonight because we don't want to go over time-wise. And uh, I'm going to end the recording here. And okay. uh, as always, this has been great. Okay, I, so I'm going to do this. Thank Very you. Very good dialogue. All right.